ladies and gentlemen welcome to a, a viewer uh, requested video this is a video uh, showing you how I land the Mi 24i uh, this is not a tutorial um, I am not confident enough in the Mi 24 to do tutorials uh, on her because um, I prefer the Mi 8 um, I don't know why, but I just prefer the Mi 8 over the uh, Mi 24. Um, so I cannot make tutorials or anything on the Mi 24. I can just tell you how I do things. So um, if you do it the same way, let me know. Uh, if you have anything that can help me improve, let me know. Um, if you learn something, let me know. It would be very nice to know how other people do it. The base for this video is a viewer. Uh, he asked me if I could do a tutorial on how to land the Mi 24 vertically, vertically um, including of what to watch for on the instruments. Yes. The instruments I'm using, when I'm coming in for landing, I am mentally prepared to land the helicopter at a, a point I have spotted. From I initiate the landing until I have touched down, I usually only use two instruments. Those instruments, um, let's see if spacebar, exit pause. I don't know if you can see my mouse cursor, but let's zoom in. This instrument, the VVI or VSI, the vertical velocity indicator or vertical speed indicator. It does not tell you whether or not your nose is pointing up or down. It tells you whether or not you're climbing or descending. If the thing, uh, or if the needle is above zero, you're climbing. If the needle is below zero, you're descending. Because we are in a simulator, we do not get the same um, gut feeling um, as real pilots do. Uh, you can use the, um, the inner ear and your gut <laughs> and your stomach to uh, know whether or not you are climbing or not. But we are simulated, so we can't do that. Therefore, my eyes are glued on especially the VVI and on the speed indicator. My speed indicator is very important because uh, uh, between 50 km per hour and 100 km per hour a lot of things happen. Uh, you lose translational lift and therefore more and more lift is generated by the rotor instead of the airframe and the uh, stop wings. The lower speed the more energy and power is needed from the rotor therefore you must be more and more aware of your collective controls and your uh, VVI to avoid getting into a VIS and VIS is vortex ring state that is uh, stalling for helicopters if you get into uh, vortex ring state there are some things you can do to get out of it but if you're too low or too slow uh, you you die that's it the scenario is I'm coming in for landing I'm at 200 kilometers power I have found a spot in the train where I land therefore I will in this stage, in the uh, final stage or the approach stage of the land, I will be mainly focused on decreasing my airspeed. And to do that in helicopter, you pitch up, but if you pitch up, you often all also climb. To avoid climbing when pitching up, I need to lower my collective to counter that. When my nose is pitching up, when I'm uh, braking, I'm aiming at um, zero um, VVI or 
perhaps a bit low if I have the uh, engine power for it. When I reach 50 kilometers per hour, practically all the lift the helicopter requires are on the rotor. Therefore, <coughs> when I when my airspeed reaches 50 km per hour, my eyes are primarily almost exclusively focused on the BBI here. This instrument is a life saver. When I'm coming in for landing I'm, and I'm descending, um, I will never ever descend more than four meters, uh, four meters uh, per second. The slower or the lower air forward air speed, the slower you're moving forward, the less descent rate you can have. If you are flying ahead at the 200 kilometers per hour, you can dump that collective to 10, 15. It does not matter because you're constantly moving outside your own rotor downwash. When I have um, decrease my airspeed to practically zero. As I said, I will keep my descent rate at no faster than 4 meters per second. I'm focused at, at around 3. Uh, for me, 3 is uh, almost the ma magic number because that is where I have a bit of leeway. I, can, uh, I have plenty of collective authority. I can race and I can lower a bit. And if I have a tendency to go into BIS, I have one meter per second to save it. Uh, so um, I have plenty of opportunities to avoid getting into BIS. The user also, or the viewer also asks if I have some tips on the setup of collective and side cycling. I never ever do I fly with any changes to the curvature of any controls at all. That includes uh, all the fixed wings and all the helicopters. All of my curvature is completely standard. I never ever touch that. The reason for that is if you change the curvature to f uh, suit you, you never ever learn the helicopter or the uh, aircraft. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Each helicopter has a different feeling on the cyclic and the collective. It is very important to know the personality, the, the temper um, of those movement. Some helicopters you can just be violent and move in <laughs> pretty violent around other helicopters you need to be smooth controlled and uh, humble don't uh, be uh, greedy and don't be aggressive smooth and controlled when I don't have any changes to the curvature I know exactly how the Mi 24 reacts if I change the curvature to uh, let's say there is a standard curvature setting for all helicopters in DCS I am not flying the Mi-24, I am flying, I am sending digital inputs to my computer, I am not flying the helicopter. If I feel a difference between uh, the Huey, Mi-8 or Mi-24, I know at the very moment I take off, oh yeah, this is uh, the Mi-24, I know that when I'm going to take off I need to have a bit of collective or a bit of cyclic that way that way i know the controls i am flying the machine i am not just sending uh, electrical signals to my computer through my joystick that is why i never ever touch curvatures on the controls it will make you a much better pilot if you never ever touch those controls or touch those curvatures if you have raw input. That is why I never ever 
chart the controls. One thing um, I have changed or changed to the same in all the DJS helicopters is that I like to have trim at the return center. That means that if I'm um, trimming my side leg over here, I press trim. I now I'm moving my joystick. You can't see it, but I'm moving my joystick. I need to return that to center before I get control again. That is just how I like um, how I like it for the trim. It depends on the joystick you have, how the joystick is mounted. Do I have a long stem on the joystick or a short stem, um, side stick, uh, center stick? It all depends on uh, your setup. So that is the only thing I changed with uh, helicopters or fixed airplanes or fixed wing. So no changes to curvatures. Only change is trim is sent, uh, trim return to center. Okay, let's get into the landing part. I wrote a uh, reply to him uh, and. Step bot is never descend more than three to five meters per second until you learn how. As I said before, I I have explained why I um, never ever go below three to five or three to four meters per second, and I have also explained um, why I use that number. Always be gentle and smooth on the controls. Never do this always smooth controls. Remember this is a moving dynamic three dimensional object you're moving. It is not a car that you can violently move from side to side. This is a object moving in 3D or 4D space. Therefore, the more controlled and smooth and gentle you are on the on the controls, be that uh, rudder right or anti-torque pedals, uh, collective or cyclic, the more controlled, gentle and smooth the air, uh, the module flies. If you do this, so will the module. Therefore, if you do this and this so will the module be gentle one thing about the collective the collective uh, good collective control and good collective understanding is extremely important um, in DCS helicopters um, why is that because the helicopters are so faithfully recreated in DCS I have never ever flown a real life helicopter so I have no real life experience I have been a passenger in a helicopter uh, a few times uh, primarily during my army time uh, tactical flying British uh, uh, Sea Kings uh, Danish uh, Phoenix very funny very funny um, but smooth controlled collective if we do this control if you take a look at the top left corner the bar moving here is my collective that is moving up and down the diamond there now moving is my cyclic the uh, in the bottom there that vertical bar moving there is my anti-torque pedals some for some people call them the rudder pedal technically there is no rudder there is a anti-torque uh, propeller uh, no, no, it's not a propeller, it is a rotor. Sorry. And uh, the uh, bottom left is the throttle. Um, there is an automatic throttle control uh, that uh, reacts on my collective. So. When I come in for landing, in if you look at the top left corner at my collective control, the thing moving here now, instead of doing this all the way down to landing position, 
But if you do that, suddenly she will drop and she will not be able to stop her movement at that point you have shed with your cyclic because it is too violent. There is too big of a difference between the starting point and the ending point. Therefore, the way I have learned to use my collective is that you move slowly, smooth, gentle, controlled movement with your sightly. I always have, let's say that I'm moving from uh, minus uh, uh, or from zero to minus one, two, three, four, five. I want the helicopter to follow me, but there is a slight delay and I do not want the delay to be more than, let's say, two. So when my collective is at minus, let's say, three, the helicopter will be no further behind that number one or minus one. So I have to move and of collective as minus one, two, three. Now the helicopter is at one. I have controlled her descent, I have full control over my collective and I have full control over the helicopter because it is a slow constant descent with her just about not catching up but she is just one step behind. It is very important to note that to keep her behind your collective but not so that she have to run to keep up with you. And let's say, let's see what I have. Yes. It is very important when you move your collective that you don't, let's say I want to go down to minus five. It is important that I do not move it to minus one, wait for her to catch up, then minus two, wait for her, minus three, because then you will be moving in notches. You're losing the controlled momentum of the descent and the helicopter. And you also have to stabilize. Each time you stop your collective, she has to stabilize. And that often takes a bit more uh, rotor power and in, in engine power to stop a descent. You all, we all know that it, it takes more power to stop something from falling than a controlled fall. If you have a stone at the end of a rope and you lower that down, if you just release the rope and then stop it, that takes much more power and energy than slowly moving the rope down to that point. That is exactly the same with the helicopter. Just remember that the helicopter is only stopped by a cushion of air. There is no rope, there is no physical thing holding her up. Therefore be controlled. And read the signs she gives you, so you don't enter via S. As I said before, it is very important to notice, be very vigilant of, of the little shaking, the little uh, movement, the little signs she gives you, so you do not enter via S. One of those are, if you look at your VVI, if you have a controlled descent and then suddenly you see the VVI needle is dropping faster than you are actually lowering your collective, then you have a problem. Then you are about to enter VAS. Therefore, raise the collective and hope that you have enough power to regain to stop that fall. This is not a lesson in how to recover from VAS. So I will not go into that. That is a completely different topic. But as I said, we don't have the gut feeling and the inner ear to help us uh, if to see if we are dropping. Therefore, my eyes are focused on the VVI and the speed indicator. All the other needles, I do not care. I do not care how high I am from the gown according to the uh, radio altimeter because I can use my ass for that. So, so I get tunnel vision on those two instruments and then straight ahead. 
learn to use the trim and use it. Trim is so useful, especially during landing. When I'm coming in for landing and I'm on the glide path, on the final uh, glide path, I often, I'm often stable there. I use the trim and then I can relax, make any adjustment and then use the trim again. One important thing to, about the trim, especially in the uh, Mi 24, is that don't, don't click trim. Uh, when you click trim, um, there's often a jolt of movement uh, together with that uh, click trim. So what I do is click, adjust, release. You don't have to hold in the trim for five minutes and don't click trim. Hold in, adjust, release. It can be a second, it can be what, however long you want it to. Just don't click trim. And remember to use the trim. The trim is your friend. It can take a lot of uh, workload off your shoulders. Shoulders, it's shoulders. Be patient, don't rush her. If you do, you die. You cannot rush a landing. Uh, when I was deployed to Iraq back in 2006-2007 uh, with the Royal Danish Army in Iraq, when we were flying home, we were delayed, uh, I believe it was uh, one, uh, one and a half day. It was something, something to do with diplomatic politics and Iran. Um, but when we landed here in Denmark, um, the pilot said it is better to land late than crash on time. For some reason, I have that sentence have stuck with me so vividly, and I use that sentence when I'm trying to land, especially helicopters. Uh, fixed wing are a bit more forgiving because you can often just throttle up and put afterburners on, but. Do not rush the landing. If you do, you die. If it takes 15 seconds to get into that perfect spot, then it takes 15 seconds. You cannot do it in 13 or 10 seconds. It takes the time it takes. Um, and you just have to respect that. And how can you shorten that time? With practice, practice, practice. But remember that at some point you reach a time that you cannot get below because that is just the time she takes to uh, react to the controls, stable on the cushion of air, get into ground effect, hover, land. There is a minimum time that you cannot get below. And when you're coming in for landing, there is a uh, saying in aviation that is that says uh, aviate, navigate, communicate. Therefore, your primary objective as a pilot is to fly the aircraft or the helicopter. Everything else, everything else is distraction. When I'm coming in for landing, I see tracers, I see explosions, I see cars moving. I do not care. I have learned to ignore it. Ignore the tracers, because as you know, you cannot rush a landing. If you get 15 holes before you land, that is just 15 holes you have to uh, repair when you get back home. You need that 15 hole to land, because if you try to only get 10 holes and you rush it, you die. Therefore, focus on the instrument focused on the landing, ignore everything else. It is very important to not be distracted by any uh, everything else. If, if you're coming in for landing in the Mi-8, you see the escort by Heinz or anything else, ignore them. It is their responsibility to avoid flying into you. When you're coming in for landing, you have no other responsibility than to land. It is everything else's responsibility to avoid getting hit by you.
and practice make per perfect. If you are trying, let's say, for half an hour, an hour, and it starts to annoy you because you keep crashing, and you you start to bite your teeth and a bit rough movement in the collective. Breathe, quit the, the game, go fly something else, give it a day, two, or a week, or a month, and then come back. If you try to land uh, any helicopter or plane, when you're on edge, you are uh, annoyed, you are angry, then you'll never ever learn anything. So, respect that it may take time. It took me, from I started flying the A10C till I had performed one full error refueling. It took me, I do not kid you, four or five years. I tried and I tried, I did not understand why I could not stay on the, on the boom. I was always hunting and, and incredibly annoyed by that boom until I learned ignore the boom. And when I learned to ignore everything else but the position of my canopy under the tanga, it became much, much easier. And when I relaxed, it is much, much easier. And you can only relax doing landings and air refueling through practice and through confidence in your movement. If you have confidence, you have surplus of energy and surplus of attention and awareness. So let's go for a flight. The, I will find a spot around here where I will try to land Emma, and I will uh, speak with through or talk with through my thought process and how I land. So uh, exit pause off. Whoop. And smooth control, let her settle. And don't try to counter every little movement. It is often not necessary. Um, she needs a bit of swaying and movement and time to become stable. So respect that and just have patience. I'm looking around for a possible landing site. I prefer a landing site that is flat so I don't slip or land sideways. If you land sideways, you have a tendency to roll over. And let's say we have a sloping from top left down below the helicopter. If you land your helicopter on that and you need to have left collective to avoid, ro avoid rolling over, please note that when the troops disembark on the left, that rotor is very close to their heads. Um, so always land with the nose up or the nose down. I cannot remember which method it preferred. Um, you need a real pilot, pilot to tell you that. Okay, now I know I need to land and I'm looking for indication of wind. Whoops, I have smoke there. That smoke in, uh, indicate the direction and strength of the wind. That is why I never ever fly without smoke. And I want to trim. I have found a spot on uh, to the right of that uh, of those uh, factories. So I take a look at my airspeed. It's 200. I lower my gear. I'm mentally prepared to land now, so I lower my collective. Looking at my VVI. Bit less collective. And I'm pitching up a more collective. See my airspeed dropping, getting in getting an indication of uh, airspeed. And I'm now fully mentally prepared to do a landing. I'm trying to get my airspeed as slow as possible. Pitching up, 
rolling over there. I know that my airspeed may be a bit too high and I may have to do a go around. Or, no I don't. And I'm just pitching up a bit more and VVI speed. When I say VVI it is because I'm looking looking at my VVI and when I say speed it is because I look at my airspeed indicator. So VVI speed. 100. Now I know I need to be very careful not to enter VRS because more and more power is now required or more and more lift is now required of the rotor and uh, VVI Racing Collective. And pitching VVI speed. I am flying at 70 km power. I would like to get within ground effect, ground effect, and that means I'm on a cushion of air that helped me to, uh, that give me a bit of lift, VVI speed, and the ground effect is equal to your rotor diameter. So if your rotor diameter is VVI speed, if your rotor diameter is 20 meters, um, you will enter ground effect when you are 20 meters above ground. VVI speed. VVI speed. VVI. VVI racing the collective. VVI. VVI looking out. VVI hot. And I'm going in for a almost hover now. What I need to do is be in a almost hover. So slowly I'm looking out now. I'm not looking at anything else but my hut and I'm looking at the terrain through my hut. And I am not looking at any instruments or any needles or numbers. I'm looking at my hut. And touch down. So let's get up. Let's take back. VVI speed. I'm looking at the smoke. The smoke is right there. The smoke is almost east-west. Um, the smoke is coming from roughly 27. So I know that now. I need to remember that. And I'm at 200 kilometers per hour. So I want to. Let's do a landing over here. EVI airspeed. My focus is now to lower my airspeed. And for that I'm lowering my collective. And I'm using the road as a guide. I need to be careful because I saw some uh, telephone poles along the road. So I mean over here to the left. VVI, whoop, see, see how fast that uh, uh, VVI needle suddenly started to move down. I caught that because I had plenty of, of collective authority. And uh, hot VVI, hot VVI, hot. Hitting fast. Oops, trimmed at the wrong wrong moment. And something is put 
pushing her. So, one more line, let's do a, another one. Ambulances. Okay, let's uh, let's land here, and I need to be careful of the trees. I'm a BVI airspeed, and let's do a vertical landing. Let's hover for just a few seconds, and then uh, land. So I'm looking at BVI. Looking at the, the uh, trees to make sure that I'm almost in a hover. Looking at the VBI. Very important not to um, lose. Okay, I can feel that I cannot. My um, anti torque rotor does not have any authority there, so I abort that landing attempt instead of just forcing it let's try another one let's try another attempt and I'm sure that the video is so long because uh, uh, I'm, I just need I uh, want you to know everything in detail and I want to give you some very good examples that is why my videos are so long I want to educate you not just tell you how to do it but why and how so i know i i have trees just above me uh, not above me below me and i'm stable now pretty stable i'm lowering i'm uh, looking out the hut the guy and as you can see the terrain is sloping hot I am, and I'm looking at the trees, the the uh, viper, uh, windshield viper, and I'm on the ground here. I know that because the ground is sloping, I can never get a perfect landing here. So let's take off. But we have one wheel on the ground, so I guess that landing will still count. Did I lose my... I have no idea what happened there. Suddenly I lost all authority on that. Well, um, <laughs> that is how I do landing. Uh, as you see, not <laughs> how not to do landing. But uh, just to summarize. Um, Never descend more than three to five meters per second. Be gentle, smooth on the collective. Make sure that she, when you lower your collective coming for landing, she does not catch up. She's just one or two steps behind. Read the sign she gives you so you're in full control of the helicopter. Use the trim or learn the trim and use it. Be patient and don't rush her. And as you saw, as soon as you feel this is not good, abort. Don't force yourself in. So, this is not a tutorial. This is just how I do it. So, I hope that you uh, you could use it. It gives some tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. Um, because. It is a, a very nice helicopter. It is just not my uh, helicopter. Um, I prefer the Mi 8 more. I understand the Mi 8 much better than the uh, Mi 24. 
some person have uh, the opposite way, uh, but we are all different, and we should accept that. So.